and part C says find the maximum R. Okay, so it's kind of, you have to think about this, how am I going to approach this, how am I going to find the maximum R, okay? And I should write down what the R that we got was. So, those are the previous answers from part A and B. So, we see that R is a, qu a quadratic function, right? So, maybe we can draw the graph and find the maximum point um, that belongs to max R. So, uh, a quadratic formula is going to look like either this, or it's going to look like this if the factor that the x that has the highest uh, degree is negative, has a factor of negative 1 in front of it. So in this case, this does have a factor of negative 1, so a regular quadratic graph is going to have flipped across the x-axis. So it's going to look like it's going down more. And that's a little bit of a hint that the question even gives you because it's telling you to find the maximum r. And the only way to find the maximum r is to find this point here that's the highest, that's, you know, the, the point between which the symmetry happens on this side and that side of the graph. If it would have been downward, we would have been finding a minimum, okay? So it's kind of a hint that they give you, find the maximum, so therefore it has to have been flipped, and it makes sense. Okay, so what are we going to do next to find this point? Maybe we should try to graph, okay? So remember, to graph, we could look for x-intercepts, y-intercepts, vertical and horizontal, asymptotes, there's different things. We can even plug in points just to see where the points would be on the graph. So let's go ahead and look for the x-intercepts because it seems like maybe it would be uh, simple to factor this out, okay? So to find x-intercepts, I have to make this equal to 0. And so I get 0 equals negative 2 fifths x squared plus 80x. So to factor, I'm going to just take out an x for now. So I get x equals, or times, negative 2 fifths x plus 80. So I'm just going to, I could take out a negative 2 fifths, but I just want to make this a little quicker. And so I'm just going to equal my x to 0 and then this guy to 0. So the first one, I know my x-intercept, one of them is going to be 0. So let's call this um, the x, and so let's say this one's 0. Okay? And now let's equal 0 to negative 2 fifths x plus 80. So now I'm going to add 2 fifths x to both sides. Remember, I'm trying to solve for x. So this cancels out to give me 80 and the side is 2 fifths x. And just remember, I could have subtracted 80. At the end, you're going to come up with the same answer if you don't mess up in the algebra. But it's the same thing to, to add 2 fifths or subtract 80, and then it works out. So now, to get rid of this 2 fifths, I need to multiply by its reciprocal, 5 halves. So these cancel out, and these cancel out. And I need to multiply this guy by 5 halves as well. So I get x equals, let's go ahead and divide 80 by 2 first. So we get 40 times 5. See, if you would have multiplied 80 times 5 and then divided by 2, you would have gotten a much bigger number. So it might have been a little slower to do. Okay, so sometimes it's easier if it's divisible already to divide the number first and then multiply. Oh. And so 40 times 5, 4 times 5 is 20. And then the additional zero, uh, zero gives me 200. So this is my second intercept. So then I can call this guy 200. Okay? So since this is zero, we know that that's ha ha that has to be where the, um, the y-axis, in this case, is going to be r, where my y-axis is going to be, because it's at, at x equals zero. Okay? And remember, this is R, not P, not Y, um, because that's where we're trying to find, the maximum R, where R is the highest. Nothing goes above this. 
Okay, so what we could do is find um, what the x is. That seems like the way to go. The x where the, the r is maximum. Because we know two points on the x axis. And we know that this graph is symmetric about this, this, point, this imaginary line here. So the, this x must be the midpoint between 0 and 200. So I'm going to uh, define midpoint like as mt, just a shortcut to the right midpoint. And so it has to be the midpoint is 200 plus 0 divided by 2. So what you do is you add both of the x's and then you divide by 2, always by 2, because you're dividing by the number of values you're adding. So you're adding two values, dividing by 2. So you end up getting uh, 200 divided by 2 is 100. So this is 100 units. Okay? So many people think to stop here and say, answer is 100. Many, many people do that. So we want to try to avoid that by using the strategy that I suggested before, which is let's see if the units and the answer that I got here matches the units in the question that they're asking me um, in the beginning. Find the maximum R, and we know R is going to be in terms of dollar amounts. So let's go back and see 100. 100 is just a number. So let's go and see what does 100 represent? What would be the units of 100? 100 is x, and x, we said, was the units per day. So x is in terms of units. And when you realize that, that really sheds light on the fact that that's not the answer because this is units and this is dollars. So that cannot be the answer, okay? So that means we have to go a little farther. So, okay, let's go and figure this out. If that's not my answer, what's my answer, right? So this is 100 units. We need to find this point, which is at 100 units, but we need to find the R value because that's what they asked me. They want to find this R where it's the highest point in the y-axis. So to find that R, all I really have to do is plug in my x where that R is happening, which is 100 units, into my revenue equation, which I already got. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into, uh, I also had negative 2 fifths, x plus 80, all times x. And that's a little bit easier to plug into. It's a little, not easier, but faster. Remember, we want to speed up the amount of time it takes us to do the algebra. Okay? So negative 2 fifths times 100 plus 80 all times 100, okay? So I can cancel the 5 with the 100 to get me 20. So I'm getting negative 2 times 20 is negative 40 plus 80, all in parentheses times 100. So this ends up giving me 80 minus 40, which is 40 times 100. So all I have to do is add two zeros to 40, and it turns out to be 4,000 dollars equals r. So now when I go and do this matching process to see if this is my final answer, I say, well, I just found the revenue in terms of dollars, and they asked me to find the revenue in terms of dollars. So I must have reached an end. So this is the answer to part C. Okay.